has not worked with you yet. Oh, the new doctor, Jodie. Thanks. <laughs> I really would love to work with her. I don't think we'll be coming back on the series because um, it's sort of completely changed hands now. Never say writer, that. no, the new writer, new production team, new everything. Um, but yeah, I think Jenny and her. Not that I've seen her doctor, but I think they'd get on well. <laughs> right over here. You got recognition for a role that you did on a short film called Connie. Can you tell us oh, yes. about that, and would you like to do horror films? Ah, have you seen it? I have not. No, um, I don't know if anyone's seen it. Um, yeah, that was a short film I did where I played um, a character called... God, I can't remember the character's name, but I also played the puppet. So I was the puppet as well. And the puppet's voice was like some screechy American voice. <laughs> to do um, We're not judging. Yeah. I think he was like Eliza Minnelli sort of voice. I think it was Eliza Minnelli. Um, what happened? Oh, the puppet was like an evil puppet, basically. <laughs> I think it was based on sort of Chucky, and um, the director had a really loved that that kind of genre. I absolutely that wasn't a horror for me. I absolutely hate horror films. Like I can't watch them. So. I don't know what it'd be like to act in one. I probably wouldn't have to act because I'd be so terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's always great to try different things and, and that was a very challenging experience, but I really enjoyed it. Right over here. So between the fabulous costumes and amazing props, is there anything that you have or wish you had creatively acquired from set, Miss Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been asked this before. Which is, I think probably the the, the leather cat suit. <laughs> well, I don't know when I'd wear it, but I just hang it up. <laughs> um, I think it was in the Doctor Who experience for a bit. Um, yeah, that and um, what else? No, I think that was my favourite costume. And, um, I don't think I had that many props. I was quite lucky not to have too many props to act with. <laughs> Over here. Um. Are there any characters that you have related to the most in, in Doctor Who or in or that in play? general? Oh, um, gosh, that's a good question. Um, like I said earlier, I think I'm, I always manage to find something. I always try and find. I have to try and find something I relate to. So. Um, personally, things in Ro Ju Romeo and Juliet, Juliet, I was able to relate to from my past, from first love, or like um, uh, Count Hot and Roof, or to do, you know, certain things. There were elements that I totally related to, and then without realising, sometimes it surprised me how it would affect me on stage that night or whatever. Um, but I've never, I'm yet to play, I don't think I'll ever play a character which is just me. I always want to try and play characters that have had different life experiences to me, yeah. Sir Winston Churchill has a question. Yes, he's a you look very, uh, very much like Winston Churchill. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my question is, is, I know you stated that it's unlikely that Jeannie and the gang will be coming back with the series being handed over. But since you have individuals like Peter Capaldi, Karen Gillan, even Dan Starkey having played different roles through different series, would you be willing to come back as, say, a different character? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there any particular like, species or something? That you <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually asked me this, like, uh, well, how, how about coming back where you are the Salorian and she Yeah, is the that would be very interesting. I'd definitely be up for that. I just thought that I don't think people good. would know who Neve was if she came on, well actually yeah. most people would know who she was, but um, yeah, it would be really fun to go some, to, to play some, someone who looks completely different to me. Do you have a particular interest on any specific um, Oh god, I don't know, what do you think? I don't know if there are, um... Not look at me! <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's a recurring species? Do, are there any other recurring species? Yeah, you could play a Time Lord, and then you wouldn't have to play Yeah, okay, I'll be a Time Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> Done. Alright, any more questions? Oh, don't come to the mic. Hi, first of all. 
first of all, um, just, I mean, the characters of Jenny and Madame Vastra are just splendid. So, I mean, straight up, happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> to have you here is just an honor. Um, I just, like, do you think, as Jenny, you're the more level-headed one in their relationship? Do you Ooh. sort of feel that? Or do you feel that role sort of goes more to Madame Bastra? Oh, that's a good question. I think they balance each other very well. It, I don't, can't imagine Madame Bastra getting that carried away. She very well trained, very experienced. I imagine sometimes Madame Bastra tell, has to tell Jenny to calm down a bit. But then we've got Strax to deal with, so... <laughs> um, I think they're a very good... They're very good for each other and, yeah, balance each other out and, and both, um, yeah, I think they both get something out of the relationship. I think Madame Rastra, um has taught Jenny a lot and um, Jenny admires her a lot, but I think maybe Jenny's taught Madame Vestra a lot about sort of being um, softer and more vulnerable and a bit less hard sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> a bit more human. Have you ever had, like, well, I mean, I suppose you have, like, anyone personally come up to you and just be like, you know, hey, thank you for just playing through your role, you've done it so well. My, sorry, what was the Like, have you, have you ever had someone, like, just come up to you and just, like, personally tell you that, like, they felt like an emotional response to yeah. just watching you play Jenny? Yeah, I have, and that was, uh, yeah, I'm always um, very... Yeah, I don't know the word is moved by that. Um, I, I guess when I was filming it, I, you don't. I try not to think about the audience too much. So that's what's lovely about conventions. You get to meet people and see how it's personally uh, affected them. And obviously, the fact that I'm representing a, a LGBT character, um, there is that responsibility there, and, and it's very heartwarming and, and um, important to hear hear how it has had an effect on people. So yeah, I, I always find that very. Um, Humble yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we have time for one more question. All right. Real quick, I'm just curious. Obviously, you know, great career, lots of different things you're doing. What do you do outside of work? Hobbies? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yes, you definitely need something outside of acting. Um, so I do quite a lot of uh, exercise, <laughs> uh, yoga, and running. Um, but I, I've also, yeah, I've um, recently, over the last few years, do, been doing quite a lot of vol voluntary work um, with refugees in London, um, which I really enjoy and um, it's just a great sort of eye opener and um, something to take me out of my own head and out of my own little life. Um, yeah, so I try and do that when I'm not working uh, in, in the week. Um, helping English classes or helping mentor or um, befriend, befriend people who are new in London who have maybe come on their own and who also have been through terrible, terrible trauma. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's, I really enjoy that, yeah. Alright, and on that bombshell, I think we'll bring the panel to a close. So Catherine, thank you very much for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you. We hope you'll join us in a few minutes for the Con Chairs panel back here in the main room.